Hello, fans. You know, there's no football like pro football. And last year certainly proved it. 55 wasn't the Lions' greatest year. But loyal Lions fans kept Briggs Stadium just about filled for every Lions game. Now, in the movies we're about to see, win, lose, or draw, the Lions put up a terrific fight from the opening kickoff to the final gun. And whatever the score, you fans are treated to a spectacle that no other sport can offer. Yes, sir. That's what you can expect every time you hear me say, it's football once again with Goebel 22. Goebel 22, rich in flavor and rich in tradition. You know, a big part of the Goebel tradition is the presentation of football and baseball on radio and TV. And being able to bring you the Lions and Tigers games, Goebel considers itself unusually fortunate. Why? Well, two good reasons. First, the continuing association with Major League Sports is a perfect symbol of the Goebel Brewing Company's leadership over the years. Second, Goebel sports shows are a great way to say thanks to all the people who, by enjoying Goebel over the years, have made Goebel's success possible. Now, if you'd like to say thanks to Goebel, well, just keep in mind what Brewster says. From the Cypress cask of Goebel comes Goebel 22. Rich in tradition, rich in flavor, and it really tastes good. And now, let's look at the highlights from seven of the Detroit Lions' big 1955 football battles. Western Conference, the Detroit Lions are off to a slow start in defense of their title. But the Lions' hopes are high for a victory as they entertain the powerful San Francisco 49ers on the rain-pelted gridiron of Briggs Stadium. The game begins on a bright note for Detroit as Jim Martin kicks off to Dick Magel of San Francisco. Magel can't hold on to the slippery hog hide. The ball bounces around, and it's Detroit's Bob Long who pins the pigskin to the turf deep in 49er territory. It's a big break for the Lions, and they cash in on it when Punchy Hornschmeyer hammers into the end zone to give Detroit a 7-0 lead over San Francisco. With the game just two minutes old, the Lions' Jim Martin kicks off for the second time. Again, the ball goes to Dick Magel, and the speedy rookie sensation takes the kick on the eight-yard line. Magel makes merry on a dandy 61-yard dash, but Doak Walker saves the day with a shoot-top tackle on the Detroit 31-yard line. Detroit's defensive alignment rises to the occasion and pulverizes Joe Perry, who fumbles. Sonny Gandy leaps on the loose ball to smother the 49er threat. The Lions open the second quarter with an all-out offensive. Bobby Lane lofts a pass to Doran Dibble on the San Francisco 37. Lane keeps the Lions airborne as he rifles a shot to Jim Doran for a first down on the prospector's 12-yard line. Rookie score, but the 49ers trail 14 to 6. The Porters bid to close the gap as Y.A. Tittle passes, but the Lions have other ideas. A 265-pound guard, Jumbo Jim Ricca, gobbles up Tittle's toss and gallops to the San Francisco 31. Harry Gilmer pilots the Lion attack, sending the ball on a 12-yard flight to Jim Doran on the prospector 16. With two minutes remaining in the first half, Doak Walker toes a 17-yard field goal between the uprights and the scored intermission, Detroit 17, San Francisco 6. Late in the third period, the Lions mount another offensive. It's Luke Carpenter supplying the legwork on a jaunt to the San Francisco 31. Rain makes the turf treacherous, but Carpenter carries on. Lightning Lou lopes for a first down on the 49ers' 13-yard line. Dave Middleton takes a pitch out and packs the pigskin through the prospectors on an 11-yard scoring surge that makes it Lions 24, 49ers 6. It looks like a win for the Lions, but these 49ers are explosive. Tittle touches off a charge with a 20-yard pass to Billy Wilson on the Detroit 35. Y.A. Tittle takes plenty of time as he surveys the situation, then pitches a perfect strike to Dick Magel, who's dragged down on the 10-yard line where the third quarter ends. Fourteen seconds into the final period, Dick Magel 
makes his way through the mud on a fine run. And Magel slithers into the corner of the end zone for a touchdown. Now it's Detroit 24, San Francisco 13. The Detroit attack goes off the track here as Harry Gilmer tries the pass. Jim Doran can't hold on to the ball, and Rex Berry makes a shoestring interception. Berry is off on a beauty of a 44-yard trip to tally for San Francisco. And despite a Detroit protest, it's a touchdown, and inside of two minutes, the Lions' lead is narrowed to 24 to 20. Late in the game, the Lions are caged, and the 49ers began a desperation drive with Tittle tossing to Billy Wilson for 27 yards to the Detroit 13. It's fourth and two for San Francisco. Tittle fumbles, but shovels a pitch out to Joe Perry. Joe uses all his jets as he powers across with a winning touchdown. It takes an almost impossible fourth quarter surge by San Francisco to hand Detroit its fourth league defeat. San Francisco 27, Detroit 24. The Detroit Lions prove an all-star attraction as a crowd of some 70,000 gathers in the Los Angeles Coliseum to see if the hometown Rams can move into first place in the Western Conference race with a win over the injury-riddled but rugged Lions. First period play finds Detroit putting a scare into the partisan West Coast rooters as Harry Gilmer connects with Dave Middleton on a 33-yard play that goes all the way. But Lion hopes are dim when a penalty nullifies this apparent score. Gilmer comes back for more as he steps to the firing line and flips a screen pass to Lou Carpenter, who carries to the Los Angeles 26. The Lions can't move beyond the Ram 20, and on fourth down, Doak Walker's 32-yard field goal puts Detroit on top, but the Rams rally with a score to lead 7-3. Late in the half, the Lions try to come back. Harry Gilmer is calm and cool as he pulls the trigger on a tremendous toss. But Gilmer's calm is shattered as Don Burroughs goes high in the air to intercept on the two. Burroughs battles back upfield to his own 35. Norman Van Brocklin goes right to work as he gets the Ram attack rolling with a pass to Bob Boyd, good for 19 yards. Van Brocklin keeps the Lions loose as he hands off to Ron Waller. Waller cuts inside right in and wheels to the Detroit 19. Detroit won't budge beyond its own seven, and Les Richter attempts a field goal from a bad angle. He makes it, and now Los Angeles leads the Lions 10-3 as the first half ends. The Lions aren't lying down with the game only half done. Harry Gilmer opens the third quarter with a precision pitch to Jug Girard, and Jug chugs all the way to the Ram 26. Gilmer feeds a handoff to Lou Carpenter, who finds plenty of room to run, and run he does. 26 yards for a Detroit touchdown. Carpenter's scoring run ties it at 10-10. On the opening play of the fourth quarter, the Motor City men mount another offensive. Doak Walker rocks the Rams on a 14-yard burst to the Los Angeles 40. Harry Gilmer lays a bullet pass on the line to Doak Walker, who's dropped on the Los Angeles 33. When the rock rib defense digs in, the dapper Doker gets set to try a field goal from the 41. It's true to the mark, and Detroit recaptures the lead from Los Angeles at 13 to 10. Los Angeles is a come-from-behind club. Norm Van Brocklin starts them rolling with a 16-yard pass to Tom Fears. The Rams have their minds set on that first place spot. Norm Van Brocklin, Crazy Legs Hirsch, put them on the right road with a pass play that has Hirsch hustling through the Lions and into the end zone on a 47-yard scoring splurge that makes it Rams 17, Lions 13. Seconds later, Los Angeles sets out for insurance. Ron Waller applies for the policy with a spine-tingling 32-yard gallop that brings the Rams all the way to midfield. From the 21, Van Brocklin wheels and deals to Ron Waller. Waller reels around right end on a sweep that's going to go all the way. The Rams now lead determined Detroit 24 to 13. 
Detroit gives its all. Gilmer engineers a drive to the Los Angeles 14. But it's the end of the line for the Lions as the Rams' Will Sherman picks off Gilmer's pass in the end zone. Detroit's final threat is washed away. And the Lions fall before the new conference kings, the Los Angeles Rams, 24-13. Pittsburgh's Forbes Field is packed with partisan fans as the Detroit Lions, their appetites whetted for victory, roar into the Steel City Stadium determined to stop the Steelers in a spirited interconference contest. In the second quarter, Forbes Field fans get a look at the Detroit aerial attack. From the Pittsburgh 31, Bobby Lane hits Dave Middleton in the open. Middleton fakes Richie McCabe to a standstill and races into the end zone. It's Lions 7, Steelers nothing. Jim Martin kicks off for Detroit. It's a daring onside kick attempt, and it works as Joe Schmidt recovers the ball for the Lions on the Steeler 43. With Harry Gilmer under center, the Motor City men move to cash in. Gilmer places a deposit with Lou Carpenter, and Lou lopes 40 yards to the payoff window to collect more points for Detroit. Score now, Lions 14, Steelers nothing. The Pittsburgh offense builds up steam as Jim Finks finds fullback fan Rogel in the open. Fink scores the bullseye as Rogel wraps it up on the Detroit 18. Jim Finks passes down and out to Steeler captain L.B. Nickel on the Detroit six-yard line. Finks keeps the pigskin airborne. Jim slants a pass deep into the corner of the end zone, and Jack O'Brien is there to score for Pittsburgh. At the half, it's Detroit 14, Pittsburgh 7. In the third quarter, the Steelers stoke their scoring furnace, but Jack Christensen puts the fire out as he filches a Fink's pass and pounds 30 yards to the Pittsburgh 18. The sturdy Steelers stand firm, and on fourth down, Doak Walker attempts a field goal. The Doker delivers, and Detroit pulls away to a 17-7 lead over Pittsburgh. The Steelers' Ted Marchabrota is hit with a tackle by Jim Martin and fumbles. Darius McCord recovers on the Pittsburgh 22. Bill Stitz turns passer with a payoff pitch to Doak Walker, and Detroit's lead mounts to 24-7. In the fourth quarter, Jim Fink sparks the Steeler rally. His pass to Ray Matthews is good for a first down on the Pittsburgh 49. Fink fades and fires a short one to Lynn Shadnoy, who zigzags for 20 yards to the Detroit 31. Fink's is firing guided missiles now as he drops an aerial bomb through to L.B. Nickel on the Lion 14. Len Shadnoy storms straight ahead to score for the Steelers. Pittsburgh narrows the Detroit lead to 24 to 14. Later, the Steelers regain possession. Now, watch this alert defensive play. Detroit's Bill Stitz gives Pittsburgh fits as he snares the Fink's pass and scores with ease. The Lions enjoy a 31 to 14 bulge. Detroit with the ball, but the fumble bug bites the Lions. Missed on a handoff, and Pittsburgh recovers the ball on the Lion 10-yard line. Archibroda going back to pass, but his receivers are covered, and Ted lowers his head, and the high-stepping Steeler stampedes through the Lions for a touchdown. Pittsburgh closes in on the Detroit with a 31-21 score. In the waning minutes of the game, the Steel City 11 strikes again on the 47-yard run pass play from Ted Marchibroda to Ray Matthews. Detroit rolls up a big lead then coast to a 31-28 win for its second victory of the season. The rugged Chicago Bears, one of the hottest clubs in play for pay football, bring a five-game winning streak into Briggs Stadium. 53,000 pigskin partisans would love to see their Lions cool off the Bears. Chicago is fighting for the Western Conference crown as Chick Jagadi lances the Lion line and carries to the Detroit 18 in the open period. Hot shot passer Ed Brown gives the Lions their lumps with a touchdown toss to Bill McCall, and Chicago jumps away to a 7-0 lead. Detroit, the defending conference king, flashes championship form. It's two time-tested pros providing the excitement as Doak Walker snares Bobby Lane's pass and turns it into a sensational 70-yard tally. At the close of the first quarter, it's Detroit 7, Chicago 7. Ed Brown spearheads a second-period Chicago drive with a 20-yard completion to Bill McCall. Rugged rookie Rick Casari lays the Lions low with a bone-rattling rush to the Detroit 7. The 
Lions spring a bear trap, but George Blanda kicks Chicago clear with a field goal, which puts the Bears in front 10 to 7. Once again, the Lions rebound and with a roar. Bobby Lane shares top billing with Dave Middleton. Middleton fakes Ken Gorgel off his feet, then picks up a block from Jug Girard, and that's how it's done. 77 yards for a breathtaking touchdown, which puts Detroit on top of Chicago 14 to 10. Near the end of the first half, the stage is set for a 52-yard field goal attempt by Chicago's George Blanda. The ball is up, up, but it hits the crossbar and bounces away. It's no goal, and at halftime, the underdog Lions have the Bears in tow by 14 to 10. Chicago gets off to a flying start in the second half. Eagle Eye Ed Brown threads the needle on a short peg to Rick Caceres, and the Bears are on the Lions 34. Ed Brown, a ball handler of great renown, fools fans, cameramen, and the Lions with a six-point pass to Harlan Hill. Chicago rebounds to lead Detroit 17 to 14. The Lions lash back with Bobby Lane leading the attack. Middleton takes Lane's toss for 13 yards. The Lions line up for a 47-yard field goal try by Doak Walker. Doak's try ricochets off the upright, and Chicago takes over. The Bears come right back. Ed Brown is featured in a fine performance with a flawless flip to Harlem Hill. The play goes all the way, 40 yards for a touchdown, and Chicago holds sway over Detroit 24-14. Down but not out, the Lions lash to the attack with Bobby Lane, twirling a flare pass to Leon Hart, who carries to the Chicago 23. Battling both the Bears and the clock, the Lions lose out. Hart takes Lane's pass on the two, but Leon is bottled up by a host of belligerent Bears. The game ends. Detroit's rally is cut short, and the Bears down the Lions 24-14. The annual Detroit Green Bay Turkey Day tussle attracts a festive holiday crowd to Briggs Stadium, where the Lions are raring to roll and ready to smack the Packers' dreams of winning the Western Conference title. Play gets underway when Fred Cohn kicks off for Green Bay. Detroit's White fields the kick on his five. White races back to the 17, where he's piled up by a pack of Packers. White fumbles, and the kicker, Fred Cohn, recovers for Green Bay. The Packers can gain only two yards, but Cohn salvages the situation with a three-point placement, which gives Green Bay an early edge. Detroit begins a goalward push, with Bobby Lane passing on the screen to Carpenter, who carries to the Packer 49. It's Lou Carpenter doing the damage again as he carries on a reverse for a 12-yard advance. Detroit drives to the Green Bay 10, but big Leon Hart loses the handle on a handoff, and Green Bay's Borden drops on the ball to stifle this Lion drive. The Packers launch a counterattack as Tobin Roth takes off around right in on a 24-yard trip that carries to his 39. On a quick opening play, Howie Ferguson rips through the middle for a first down on the Detroit 16. From the eight, Tobin Roth climaxes the drive by shooting a bullseye pass to Gary Napple, who puts one foot in the end zone, and the Packers take a 10-0 first quarter lead. In the second period, the Packers are still packing a mean offense, but not for long. Roth's pass sails out of Ferguson's hands. Alert Jack Christensen picks up the loose ball and takes off on a 36-yard journey that winds up on the Packer 34-yard line. Passing master Bobby Lane spots a man in the open. Lane lets fly with a pitch to Dave Middleton, and it's good for 19 yards. On fourth down, Bobby Lane passes behind the line to Lou Carpenter, who scoots into the end zone, and the Lions roar back to make it Green Bay 10, Detroit 7. With time running out in the half, the Lions make a break for themselves by forcing Howie Ferguson to fumble. Bob Miller recovers for Detroit, and it's a first down on the Green Bay 20. The Packers hold fast, but on fourth down, Doak Walker splits the uprights with a 25-yard field goal, and at the end of the half, the Lions have rallied to tie the score at 10 all. The teams battle on even terms through the third period. In the fourth quarter, Green Bay's Dick Deshane punched to Jack Christensen on the Lion 10. Swivel hit Chris, 
thrills the crowd and chills the Packers with a 32-yard gallop to the Lion 42. From the Green Bay 49, Lou Carpenter bursts through the line and into the open. Lou streaks through the secondary on a scintillating sally that results in a tally. This puts the Lions ahead 17 to 10. Later in the period, the Packers attempt a field goal, but Rote fumbles the pass. Rote recovers and laterals to Fred Cohn, but the ball bounces off Cohn's fingertips. Sonny Gandy grabs it with a host of Packers in hot pursuit. Gandy races 48 yards to score. Now the Lions, who at one time were 10 points down, enjoy a 24 to 10 lead over Green Bay. The Packers bid to pull the game out of the fire. Tobin Rode gets away a long pass. Detroit's Jim David takes the pass away from Houghton, and the Green Bay threat is washed away. It's a happy Thanksgiving for Detroit with a 24 to 10 victory over Green Bay. In one of the key games in the Western Conference title race, the second place Chicago Bears know they will have their hands full if they hope to tame the Detroit Lions as the two teams square off on Wrigley Field. We pick up the action in the second quarter with the Lions on the loose as Luke Carpenter carves out a 19-yard gain for Detroit. The Lions are full of fight today, and they'd love to spoil things for the Bears. Bill Walker wraps up Lane's pass at midfield. The Motor City men move in on the goal line as Lane looks and lofts to Dave Middleton. Dave dances through the Bears on a 46-yard play that makes it goal to goal for Detroit. Luke Carpenter hammers across, and the Bears are blue as the Lions lead 7 to nothing. The Detroit defense halts the Bears, and the Lions charge upfield. Leon Hart gets his 255 pounds underway and bowls for 17 yards. Luke Carpenter takes up the task and squeezes through the Lion line to lope all the way to the Chicago 28. Bobby Lane shows the form that led the Lions to a championship as he hurls a strike to Jim Doran, and Doran dashes across to score for Detroit. The Lions fail on the conversion attempt, and although they head the Bears 13 to nothing, that point could prove important. The Lions are on their way again when things begin looking up for Chicago. Bobby Lane's fumble is picked up by Chicago's George Connor, who lights out with nothing in front of him but the goal line, and races 48 yards to score for the Bears. At halftime, it's Detroit 13, Chicago 7. It's a costly play in more ways than one, as Detroit's Bobby Lane is shaken up and forced to leave the game. In the third period, the Bears take dead aim on victory. Ex-Buckeye Bobby Watkins bursts into the Detroit secondary. Bobby bounces to the turf, but regains his feet to pick up 33 yards. Bullet Bob gets the ball again and filters through the Lion line. Once on his way, Watkins weaves a zigzag course to the Detroit one. Even the officials got bounced around on this play. Rick Caceres crashes across as Chicago posts seven points to take a slim 14 to 13 lead over Detroit. The Lions have to come from behind, but they're coming fast. Fullback Leon Hart takes a pitch out and thunders for 27 yards, and Detroit is deep in the lair of the Bears. Harry Gilmer has replaced Lane at quarterback, but the Lion air attack keeps clicking. Gilmer throws, and Carpenter catches to put Detroit on the Chicago 9. Luke Carpenter crunches to his second touchdown, and the Lions rally to regain the lead at 20 to 14 over the Bears. Late in the final period, the Lion lead looks safe, but Doak Walker fumbles, and Bill George recovers for Chicago to put them just 20 yards away from the payoff patch. One play is all it takes as Ed Brown comes back to pass. He arches a towering toss to the far corner of the end zone, and Harlan Hill pulls it in. George Blanda's 141st consecutive conversion makes it Bears 21, Lions 20. But the Lions aren't finished yet. Late in the game, Doak Walker attempts a 37-yard field goal, but it's off the mark. And the gallant Detroit effort fails to stop the Bears as they defeat the Lions by a slim 21 to 20 margin. In a genuine tribute by loyal Lion Rooters, 46,000 frigid fans brave a 29 degree temperature at Briggs Stadium as the great Dope Walker makes his final appearance with the Lions. 
The New York Giants formed the opposition in this, the season finale. On Doak Walker Day, the Doker gets off to a terrific start. Walker grabs a Harry Gilmer pass, sidesteps two would-be tacklers, and races for a thrilling touchdown on the end of a 25-yard play. This gives the Lions an early 7-0 lead. New York retaliates with a rush. Frank Gifford turns right in for 12 yards to the Detroit 48. Don Heinrich arches an 18-yard bullseye to Bob Schnelker, who's driven out of bounds on the Lions 31. New York's Alec Webster cuts inside left end and barrels over Detroit's Bill Stitz en route to a giant touchdown to tie the score at 7-7. In the second quarter, New York climaxes a 65-yard drive as Frank Gifford fades to pass. Gifford changes his mind and romps 21 yards without being touched for the giant TD. New York leads Detroit 14-7. The Lions battle back, but Harry Gilmer's pass is intercepted by Harlan Sparr, and he returns 19 yards to set up shop for the Giants in Lion territory once more. Taking nicely, Don Heinrich rolls back and fires a 37-yard strike that Frank Gifford grabs on the dead run as the Giants score again. New York's lead is now 21-7. Harry Gilmer fades to toss for the Lions. Luke Carpenter latches on, then twists his way on a 29-yard canter into Giant territory. From the 25, Harry Gilmer fires again. This time, Bill Stitz is the receiver, and the Lions have a first down on the New York 10. The defense comes alive, so Detroit's Doak Walker, the league scoring champion for 1955, calmly tows a 19-yard field goal, but the Lions trail the Giants 21-10 at halftime. The Giants are red hot in the third period. Don Heinrich hits Frank Gifford with a 12-yard strike, and New York is on the Detroit 29. The Lions cut the Giants down, but they can't stop booting Ben Agajanian's 26-yard field goal. And the New York lead mounts to 24 to 10. Later, New York's Tom Landry tries a punt from his own end zone. Hard-charging Detroit Lion Bob Long blocks the kick. It rolls out of the end zone for a safety. After three periods, it's New York 24, Detroit 12. Trying to come from behind, Detroit's iron-armed Harry Gilmer passes to Jim Doran, and the play nets 14 yards to the New York 38. Jug Gerard knifes through the giant forward wall for an 11-yard pickup. Luke Carpenter takes a pitch out and cuts through the New York secondary for a 19-yard TD, but the Lions are unable to overtake the early New York lead. And the Giants eke out a close 24-19 victory over Detroit in the season's finale. Boy, the Lions didn't win any championships in 1955, but they certainly gave us plenty of football thrills. You know, the Goble Brewing Company likes to present baseball and football on radio and TV because it's a great way to say thanks for the wonderful reception folks have given Goebel 22 for so many years. But there's another reason for Goebel sport programs. They're a good way to spread the word about Goebel. Now, Goebel 22 is a beer of quality and fine, distinctive taste. It's really refreshing, but people have to know about it. And in this area, which is famous for its loyal sports fans, the ball games are a perfect way to get the Goble message over. It's a simple message that means more enjoyment for more people. From the Cypress casks of Goble comes Goble 22, rich in tradition, rich in flavor. It really tastes good. Enjoy Goble 22 often. You'll enjoy Goble 22 a lot. And that's it, friends the highlights of the Detroit Lions 1955 season. If you've enjoyed this film half as much as Goebel enjoyed bringing it to you, well then, you had yourself a great time. We certainly hope so. For all your interest, our heartfelt thanks. And until next season, 
So long and good luck from Goble 22 and the Detroit Lions. Thank you.